Why do you need a good computer for video editing? Let's go over some of the most overlooked basics of computing power. Hi, I'm Dan Amesqua with Amesqua Multimedia and Marketing. Nowadays, computers are moving at super fast speeds. So why is it that so many people struggle with their computing power? People who edit photos and videos that are attached to an external storage device typically suffer from slower speeds. The computer literally chokes when working on these massive files. Why is this? My main computer is so incredibly fast, but it doesn't seem to handle these files very well. Well, here's the thing. The connection to that external drive is a massive hanging point. There are several things to consider here. How fast is that connection? Are you using USB 2, USB 3, Thunderbolt? Another thing to consider is the disk speed. Is it a spinning disk or solid state? Spinning drives take a bit longer to write data and they also wear down more easily. If you have a file that is having to be sent back and forth from the external drive to the internal workings on your computer, you may have a bottleneck. Modern cameras are capturing 4K footage. Your shiny new iMac might be able to handle 5K footage, but your external drive might only be able to transmit at speeds that can only handle tiny video files. Let me show you. I have a link in the description below, but if you are viewing this somewhere other than YouTube, go to Google and search for Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. What you want is a program that looks like this. Now open it up and click the cog in the middle and select the hard drive that you want to test against. In this example, I am testing against a hard drive I own that uses USB 2. As you can see, the results are paltry and awful. Believe it or not, this is what most people are doing wrong. You need a faster connection to get more of those check marks. So what do I do? I personally use my internal drive for my video editing. When I'm done, I use that USB 2 hard drive as my storage for all the files from the project, just in case I want to go back and revisit those files in the future for another video. What do professionals do? Bigger studios use a modular setup called Jellyfish, but this will run you in the tens of thousands of dollars. The average video editor uses a network attached storage or NAS, NAS. I used to own a Drobo, but currently I am pursuing a system made by QNAP or Synology. These will still cost you thousands of dollars, but are well worth the investment. Not only do they transmit data faster, but they also have redundancy options in case you ever have a hard drive fail. In this example, another video editor posted their speeds from the QNAP while getting significant boost from the Thunderbolt 3. As you can see, this editor is able to store, which is helpful for viewing or watching your videos, and also edit their files from the external hard drive. The read speed equals watching your videos, while the write speed equals editing your videos. If you want to learn more about these techniques video editors use to get a boost from their video editing machines, be sure to click the link in the description below to get a deep dive into video editing power machines. And we'll see you on the next one.